Hi, welcome to the Health and Wellness Network. I'm Vanessa Pang. Dr. Blake Perkins is back and he's gonna talk about, this time, bone grafting. A bone graft maximizes the outcome of dental implants. Dr. Perkins is from New Image Cosmetic and Family Dentistry in Vancouver, Washington. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Perkins. Glad to be here. Let's start by going over what a bone graft is. So basically what a bone graft is, it's simply replacing bone that you're missing in the mouth with bone so that we can adequately restore the area. So when is bone grafting necessary? Generally a bone grafting is necessary anytime we need bone to restore an area like I just mentioned, particularly in the case of a dental implant. Uh, if you remove a tooth and you do not place bone in the area uh, that the tooth was in, eventually over time that bone starts to recede both in height and in width and it makes it more difficult to restore it. Dr. Perkins, can you tell us what happens in a bone grafting procedure then? A bone grafting procedure is actually fairly simple. What we have to do, uh, particularly if we're removing a tooth first, is we take the tooth out very carefully to make sure we preserve enough bone around the area to hold the graft in place. And once that's done, then we clean the socket out so there's no soft tissue in there that's going to inhibit the graft's ability to adhere to the bone. Once that's completed, uh, then we take the bone graft material that we've chosen and we place it in the socket all the way up to the level of bone that exists there unless we want to add more bone, which in that case we would place it where we needed it. Uh, once that's complete, we generally place a what we call a membrane over the top of the bone to protect it and prevent the skin cells from growing into that graft material while it heals. And then we simply suture over the top of that to hold everything together while the healing process takes place. So then what are the different types of bone grafts? Uh, there's generally four different types of bone that you can uh, use to do a bone graft. The first one is what we call uh, synthetic bone, and that's usually some sort of uh, calcium phosphate and other materials that are found in bone, but it's made obviously uh, in a factory somewhere. Uh, the next type of bone is what we call a xenograft, and that's generally derived from cow or bovine bone. Finally, we have two types of bone that are human related. One is called an allograft, which is uh, achieved through uh, bone banks. We get that bone uh, from cadavers, which have been, obviously the bone has been cleaned and deprotonated and it has nothing in it that is connected to the person from where it came. And then finally, uh, an autograft where the bone actually comes from the person itself uh, that we're doing the graft procedure in. So how do you decide which one best fits a patient's needs? Uh, it really depends on a lot of different factors. Some of them include the type of bone that the patient has. Uh, what we're looking to do at the end of the graft procedure, whether it's an implant, whether we're just restoring bone to keep bone height. So there's several different things that we have to think about when we're choosing which one to use. But most of the time uh, in today's grafting procedures, either uh, the synthetic bone or a mixture of the synthetic and the allograft bone is what's used. All right then, so what are the risks? The risks are pretty mild. Uh, the biggest one is that the graft doesn't take for some reason. Uh, generally, it's the host response or the person who we're grafting, their body rejects it. Uh, or uh, some of the other risks include the common risks of an oral surgical procedure, which can include pain and swelling and infection. So we manage all of that with pain medication and with antibiotics. Dr. Perkins, you've been very informative. Thanks for your time today. Now you're welcome. And you've been watching the Health and Wellness Network. <laughs>